Welcome back. My good name is Sankoa and this is hashtag why in the morning as always interact with us on social media that includes X, Twitter, X, Twitter, Twitter, which is now X and threads and Instagram, including Facebook at Y244 channel. And uh, personally, you can find me at Brian Sakwa 101. This is the last conversation and interview of the day. And as always, you want you to interact with us and continue sending your feedback. We've already posted our social media platform. There's a question right there. And uh, check us out and let us know where you're watching from, not listening. This is not radio. This is TV. But Karibu Sana. And uh, today we're going to talk about how to create a sustainable business. What exactly? does it take and now that we're incorporating a whole new world of possibilities that includes technology and much more in terms of software development uh, security systems uh, how do you mentor as well young people who have dreams and aspirations of being successful in the professional space and we're being joined uh, live in studio by Alex Ndonga he's uh, a software developer plus many other things that he does in the field of entrepreneurship. Good morning, Alex. Uh, good morning to you, Brian. Karibu sana. Thank you, thank you so, so much. So let's start off with your, uh, a little bit of your journey. Um, you've done the IT part or the tech part a lot, but then there's mentorship, you mentioned it to me off air, and there's, there's even a business project that you already began. So where did you officially start? You started with the tech part, and then come into business, mentorship, and then a project. Which one came first? Well, I started on the tech aspect of things. Uh, the building systems, business systems, is what has enabled me to understand how uh, the business ecosystem works. Uh, with my experience having uh, built uh, systems for over 30 companies in all over across the world, I've been able to see how multiple business types function. Yeah. Uh, so I have gained a lot of experience in seeing how businesses move from uh, one phase to another, the automation needed in a business. Yeah. So the tech part is what actually brought me into business and entrepreneurship. Right. Yeah. Uh, where was the gap? Did you see a gap in that, in, in the professional spaces? Um, uh, was, did it come from an, uh, a, a place of passion and dreams and aspiration? Am I, you, by the way, they say if you start solving people's problems, you definitely start making money. Yeah, yeah. Did it come from money inspiration? Because also people work to get money, start a business to make profit. Yeah. So which is which? Well, I cannot. I can say um, when developing a business, there is always the need for you to understand what it is, and I saw a gap in this because. Uh, I came to find out that most people, when they're starting a business, they don't know how to, what needs to come at what point, so you can automate all of it. Okay. And uh, because of this, I saw that uh, my ability to create develop systems was coming to help them a lot okay. <coughs> in, um, in bringing out their businesses and in bringing out the full potential of their business. Because you know, uh, what I came to realize is that business automation yeah. makes uh, your business uh, move quite fast. Right. Yeah, because you're able to forecast things. Uh, you're able to analyze uh, the growth of your business as opposed to just doing it manually. Right. And uh, in this also case, uh, you're able to see that uh, business automation helps you with, uh, it saves a lot of time. Right. for you as a business owner uh, in record keeping and things like that. So mm -hmm. I saw the opportunity there. I saw that it's something that is actually really needed and it yeah. saves a lot of time right. and energy for your staff and whatnot. Absolutely. So this means you professionally went to college or a tertiary institution or a university to study what yeah. you practice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, is yes. there maybe a specific uh, major that you focused on? So I went to Jomo Kenyatta University. I Jujia did. Boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, you know about it, yeah. Mm. So I went there, did uh, IT. Right. Yeah, and after that, I went, I specialized in co cloud computing and systems development. Right. I've also done a couple of professional courses that allow me to work on certain platforms right. that are easy for me. You know, when you're working in the IT field, you don't, uh, you cannot do everything in the IT field. Right. 
Yeah. You have to specialize into something. You have to yeah. use a platform that you're most comfortable with right. and you advance on it. Yeah. So I did, uh, I use a platform called FileMaker and I'm able... Fa? FileMaker. Or FileMaker. Yeah. Is it like a language like Java? Yeah, coding, it's, whatever? It's, it's some sort or of a system. idea. Right. Like something, uh, it's an environmental, it's a uh, development environment. Uh -huh. that uh, we use, it's something like Salesforce also. Like, right. I don't know if you've heard of Salesforce. Uh -huh. So it's something that we use to automate databases and uh, systems that uh, manage uh, entire companies. And on top of that, we also have um, now the cloud infrastructure right. that is now able to uh, take your business on the, other, on the next level because you can now expand your business into multiple branches and things like right. that. And this is happening in a in a in a in, in like a cloud structure yes. or something of that sort. Yes, exactly. All right. Uh, you mentioned the word cloud computing, and I know you know that word pops up a lot in the tech tech guys in the, the tech jargon space uh, mm -hmm. or people who are savvy with coding like you and development with Java and the rest of the languages you guys use and Python. I know you'd know that. Yeah. So if you can just explain to someone who's watching what is cloud computing, basically <laughs> in layman's explanation. Okay, um, cloud computing is um, is basically uh, putting uh, your systems or your your business systems in a point where anybody can access them. So cloud computing incorporates of mostly uh, there's the hardware aspect of the cloud computing, there's the software aspect of the cloud computing, and then there's the network aspect, which also incorporates the security aspect of the cloud computing. Right. So those are like another brand. It's like you've created a topic and then subtopics and then a subtopic with another subtopic. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you've mentioned the security aspect. Uh, uh, which other one did you say? Okay, so there's the hardware aspect. Hardware and then software. There's the right. software aspect. Uh -huh. There's the network aspect, which right. <coughs> will also incorporate the security aspect of the cloud computing. Because, uh, to put it simply, cloud computing just is just accesses your systems to the internet. Right. Uh, may they be big or small? Is it big data or small data? It does not matter. But as long as they are. Uh, on our cloud platform, they are accessible to anyone. Or to the employees. Yeah, to the company. employees, to your other people who might yeah. actually need it, like uh, your partners who might right. want to access, access your business systems. Yeah, you know, right. like we live in um, um, we live in a tech world now. We live in a futuristic kind of world now, and uh, yeah. like you remember, like the time for COVID, people had yeah. to work from home. Shout out to the word Zoom. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> and exactly. Recently, and recently the company called people to come back to work and yeah. work at the company mainly itself. So it was controversial. You guys created a platform to tell us to work from home. Now you're calling us to work at the office. Yeah, I yeah. saw that on <laughs> CNN a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> so it was really interesting. Yeah, yeah you Shout know, out to Zoom once again. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's some companies that have not even uh, come back to, to work people physically. To work. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, uh, such kind of uh, cloud systems Right. They save on cost. They save a lot on cost on companies yeah. because um, you can have a very small space yeah. and you can have everybody work from home. Right. They all, they all they need to do is do their part on the systems and they just need to, maybe if it's reports, they just do their reports there yeah. and uh, they don't really need to come to work. And uh, you can find that uh, it saves the company a lot of money. Right. It also saves uh, your employees a lot of money because they don't have to come to work every day. Right. They have but it limits, uh, it, it, <coughs> it, it denies you the favor, flavor, not favor, the mm -hmm. flavor of human interactions. <laughs> well, <laughs> that is the dark part. Well, I cannot say it denies you the flavor of human interaction because uh, as the way I think about it, yeah. it even gives you more time to have human interactions that you need. You might even have enough time to even start a second business because you don't have to spend so much time on a commute, uh -huh. going to work. Right. Uh, human interaction, I will say is- Physical. A, a, yeah, physical, a physic interaction. physical interaction, yeah. Mm. I'll say is a personal thing. Uh, oh, so there's people who don't, <coughs> especially to IT, uh, like you, uh, mm -hmm. the developers, uh, the, the friends they have, they don't mm -hmm. want to talk to people, they don't <laughs> want calls, they don't want to go out. Bro, you want to die. <laughs> nah, nah, Why nah. do you want to die very early <laughs> and you're not 50? <laughs> uh, well, well that, that is actually true. I've seen it myself. 
Yeah. Yeah. Most uh, some uh, you can say that they are a bit more introverts. Yeah. Is, is it a thing that you guys just because you're a developer, so you're a nerd? Um, you don't want to talk to, <laughs> but anyways, I understand, I understand, introverts, personality yeah, types. But uh -huh. that is not just for, you know, in building a, a system, right. um, you have the developer, but you cannot build a system just for the developer, you have the users. Right. So you must think about the users. Right. Now, we, when we create such kind of systems for a company, right. um, a com the company might decide, okay, you must come to work, uh, maybe twice a week, mm -hmm. maybe three times a week, maybe once a week, right. but the rest of the time you must, uh, you can do your work from anywhere. Right. If you decide that, okay, uh, I'm feeling a bit uh, tired and I need to go to Mombasa, right. you can just go with your computer, you can still do your work in Mombasa as long as you just report your work. Yes. Um, everything else is good, you can do your other things, you can be right. free, you can be able to uh, venture into other things that you might actually want, you know. Like in this life, what I think is that you must do things when you have the energy to do them. Mm -hmm. So in encompassing uh, business systems, you can be able to uh, allow your employees to have more free yeah. time to also develop their personal life and not just think about work, work, work. Work, 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 work. Yeah. The previous guest was here. There's a pleasure I lighted. Uh, you spent half of your life at work. <laughs> so if you are, you are experiencing chaos in your workplace, definitely, at home you'll experience chaos yeah. because uh, we spend most of the time, for example, if you got a nine to five, you know, mm -hmm. d different from media sometimes, you could be on a, a morning presenter, you work from six to 10 and then the rest yeah. you're on other stuff. Yeah. So for example, you're working from uh, seven to 7 p.m., 7 a.m., yeah. definitely your whole entire life is spent yeah. physically at your workplace. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you also know, like they also say that you spend a third of your life sleeping. Right. So, but you turned of your love sleeping. Yeah. How how, how is that? <laughs> because um, how many hours do you sleep in a day? Six hours. Uh huh. Uh, so you can add that seven to seven plus the six hours. So that's twelve hours plus six hours that you're sleeping. Yeah. So how much time do you really have for your personal life? None. Yeah. None. So wow. Tricky, <laughs> tricky, very tricky, and that can affect your mental health. Yeah. Anyways, uh, as we shift gears before we get to the entrepreneurial part, um, you mentioned of, uh, of uh, automation systems. Uh, so how does that happen in, let's say, pragmatically in a business now? For oh. example, let me use Y, Y254 mm -hmm. KBC mm -hmm. uh, for automation. So if you are to build for us such a system, what does it comprise of? Where do you start? Uh, what is the first conversation you're going to have with the boss? who's in charge of such a department. Okay, uh, when it comes to business automation, first of all, we must uh, uh, get the requirements of you as an enterprise or with you as a, an organization. We must get your needs first. And the main focus of this will to be to make sure that uh, your needs are met uh, in the most automated way possible. And basically, uh, the biggest automation that I personally do is uh, mostly on record keeping and uh, record generation and business integration. Mm -hmm. So when I say business integration, this is how your business communicates with other businesses and right. how your business communicates with uh, your customers. Like say for a media house, right. uh, just to give an example, a media house will have to integrate with say Safaricom, M-Pesa, yeah. something like that, if right. they are going to be selling their digital media uh, to the public. Yeah. So there's the business to business aspect integration with uh, your business partner on this side, and then there's the business to client integration. Right. And all of this has to be automated in the, in system. Yeah, okay. in the system, because uh -huh. these are very tedious things for you to actually do manually all the time. Right. So, uh, so maybe uh, is there like a specific system that, for example, you can mention uh, that maybe you've successfully worked on that you can say, uh, Ama, any any ex background experience that you know you worked for this company and this is what we did and it's working. You can even check it out if you're watching right now. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I can give an example of a shipping system that I did. Mm -hmm. uh, so my client was uh, a Canadian client. Mm -hmm. and uh, I built a system for them. The system encompassed of, uh, we had to integrate with their shipping partners. 
Okay. And uh, at the same time, we have to manage uh, all the shipping aspects of uh, their business. We have to create a portal for the client okay. so that they can f be able to track their inventory. So in this case, my client was uh, shipping from Canada, New York, Miami to the Caribbean islands, you know, like right. St. Lu Louis, St. Louis, oh, sorry. Mm. Um, Barbados, uh, right? Yeah, you know those That's Caribbean islands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we were just doing that was our main focus. Okay. So you find in such a way for us to automate this business, uh, a company that is buying our systems has multiple um, locations. Mm -hmm. It needs a location, say in Miami. It needs a location in Barbados. It right. needs a location in uh, New York. Right. So, yeah, so there's the receiving aspect of it. We automate the receiving aspect of it. We track your inventory and uh, we track your inventory through the shipping uh, routes. And uh, we find uh, on the receiving end, we also automate the disbursement of your goods. Mm -hmm. Because in a situation like this, these were clients who were moving more than two, three thousand shipments in a week. Mm -hmm. So when you're following up on such a business, you have to right. automate the record keeping of this because one time right. a client will just come and ask you, uh, uh, where is my cargo, where is my yeah. delivery? Right. Yeah, so we have to automate from the start of, the, uh, of uh, bringing in the cargo from this side. We have yeah. to automate how it goes in. Right. You have to keep all the records of everybody who has been in contact with that parcel. Yeah. Right. And we have to know uh, what time we expect it to get there. All these things are automated okay. and calculated. So before... And all in a system. Yeah, yeah. So who is doing the back end of that? Is it like from a server? Uh, is it like a center where all this transaction is happening and all the details of this shipment from, you said, from the client to yeah. delivery to receiving to now the record keeping. Is it like a back end of that transaction for that business? Well, uh, Yes, there is a back end, but it's mostly calculations. Okay. So you see, the most important thing that you must know about business automation is that uh, you make the calculation once. Right. You don't uh, have to keep doing, you know, like if you're doing it all the time, like you have to, manually yeah, you, you have to do the same calculation 10 times, 20 yeah. times. But this is, it's even like in seconds. Yeah, yeah, it already knows, you've already configured it on this side, it knows right. that, okay, this is mm -hmm. what it is, these are the prices, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. And once right. you have configured it to the right way, That's there is it. no way it will make and a mistake. And it's seamless and easy and secure. Yes, exactly. All right, now let's shift to your other facet, which uh, in your description, you talked about mentorship. Um, there's a project you also started. So how did you, you know, leave this other part? Is it because you grew and became big and you now have like a couple of clients at your disposal and so you decided to branch into this other space? And how do you do that? Well, um, I decided to branch out into uh, the mentorship and the business development for uh, other business types because first of all, I realized that I have a skill in being able to quickly understand your business and right. because business automation is very, very important, right. I think ahead of all the things that you need so that I can automate them for you and make your business easier. So when I do business uh, mentoring for the youth, I, I help them in doing feasibility study so we can see, first of all, if their business makes sense or not. Right. And also, I also help them in uh, knowing the things that they need, the requirements that they need. Uh, as I told you before, uh, some businesses need uh, certain types of skills to actually do. Right. Uh, so this, at this point, we'll be like, okay, uh, do you have the skills that you need for right. you to be able to run this kind of business? Right. Or some businesses need some capital, right. okay, and uh, not necessarily so much skill. Some right. businesses don't even really need that much capital, that skill, and right. you know, any business is viable. Right. You know, uh, the good thing about business development and creating a good entrepreneurship ecosystem in Kenya is because yeah. we have a job deficit problem here. Right. If you as a youth are able to create a business, right. chances are in one or two years, you'll employ two people, yes. Right. Or even more. Yeah, or even more, yeah. Right. So. Sometimes, right? Absolutely. Yeah, 
something like that. Mm -hmm. So we try to encourage uh, the youth, uh, well, you don't have to go out and look for a job all the time, which yeah. is, it's a good option for you to do. Right. But you can also try out something and else. Create your own job. Yeah, create your own job and you might find yourself creating a job for two people for two other or three of your other people. From the university. Yeah. But then uh, oh, also uh, there's, there's a recent, uh, there's a recent uh, update on SMEs and the way they're doing in Kenya. Uh, the main outline was funding, 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 funding. And they're requesting for funding from the government. And the president said he vowed that he's going to um, support all, SME, all SMEs, that is small and medium enterprises. So for, you've mentioned there's even uh, businesses that don't require much capital. Yeah. <laughs> there may be examples of those that just don't need much. And how much is not too much and how small is not too small for a startup now? Well, um, some startups actually do not really need that much capital. Like say you want to sell something, yeah? Right. Like say you want to sell uh, a computer over here Right. or you want to sell, uh, it, first of all, you have to def define what kind of business you want to do. Right. Some business you might have to get a bit of capital because you, you need to get some stock and you have to manage this stock. Right. Some business you don't really have to do that. Maybe your, your business niche is in this point is uh, you're very good at networking and finding people who actually need these computers. You don't right. really need to buy these computers. Mm -hmm. You just need to know where they are. Right. So in such a kind of a business, you really don't need uh, a lot of capital to start. Okay. Uh, you just need to have information on what is where. Uh, who is your target client? Basically, I, I feel like target market should be like at, at the front part of any business plan. <laughs> if I'm starting to sell mandazis right mm -hmm. now, yeah. who are my target yes. clients or customers? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Must, yeah. You must know who you like to sell to so that right. you can even do the feasibility uh, study for your business and see if it's actually feasible or if it can actually work or not. Right. You must be able to know, uh, okay, I need to target these people. Yeah. This is how I can reach them. You know, you might target people that you cannot reach. Absolutely. Because some people, yes, to be honest, some people are out of reach and uh, it may take you a bit of time to actually be able yeah, to... Create that niche. Yeah, create There's that somebody niche. Somebody who yeah. gave an example of... Uh, is it the Bugatti Veyron company or the mm -hmm. Tesla mm -hmm. that, you know, they don't have to advertise their, you know, products. Yeah. Even iPhone, Apple itself, they don't have to advertise, oh, come buy iPhone 15 now that they've already rolled out the 15 Pro yeah. Max and they're yeah. even rolling up more. Like they just automatically advertise themselves. So there's business, businesses that don't require for you to whisper or tell a friend or, yeah. you know, come on, even talk about them because they already have a niche, yeah. like the specific cadres of people in society who will know that, yes, I want a Tesla. And so definitely <laughs> yeah. I have to go to a, a, a Tesla you know, a showroom and look out for my favorite. So now for, uh, I'm trying to compare that with someone, someone right here in this country. You okay. know, for example, you've started an assembly, an assembly, an, a car assembling business. Yeah. And uh, you, how, how do you do reach out well, to people so that people get to know that you have this car assembly business? Well, okay. Um, what you just spoke about right now is branding. Mm -hmm. Business branding is very, very important because you know you have to brand yourself uh, in the way that you like your clients or your customers to view or perceive you. Right. So the br is like say for Tesla, for example, uh, this is a very well known company. They have branded themselves very, very well. So right. they don't, they spend quite less on uh, marketing, but and that is not to say, sense. yeah, that is not to say that these companies have not had failed products. I right. was actually watching uh, a list uh, on, uh, I think it was YouTube, right. on some of the tech products that actually failed. Mm -hmm. I was surprised to find things like HP had a tablet right. that failed. During their fast, fast initial. Yeah, they had a tablet, but HP is a very good company. Right, yes, um, most computers actually yeah. are used to HP. Yeah, <laughs> if, you knew, if you remember a while ago, there was a brand called Compaq. Yes, Compaq. Yeah, and you see it disappeared. Yeah, yes. the, so uh, HP swallowed up Compaq. Right, and Compaq died. Yeah, so it was just incompressed into HP. But you see now, HP is a very good computer. Everybody knows this. Right. But not all products made by make a good, uh, yeah, will even, even for big companies, not all of them will make it. Right. So you have to know, uh, and most of them actually fail because uh, the users just rejected them. Yeah. 
to be honest, yeah, yeah like uh, there's also uh, the Microsoft one. Microsoft uh, created uh, an operating system for the phone, if you can remember. Windows. Windows, okay. Windows phone. Yeah. There's, yeah, there was even a Windows phone. It, it yeah. had a weird setup. Where is it now? <laughs> Right. Yeah. They tried to make Nokia. Did they use Nokia? To yeah, make they used. Yes, they, they used Nokia. Right. But it also it was also phased out. But you see, Microsoft is a big company. Absolutely. Yeah. So, business is not guaranteed to succeed. Mm -hmm. There's always risk in business. Right. But uh, you must be brave. You must be a risk taker to get into business. So you must not be afraid to fail because you don't know how many times you will fail before you succeed. Mm -hmm. So the thing in here will for you, be for you to uh, manage right. in the things that you fail on because uh, you actually don't want to spend all your resources uh, into failing on one project. You must do a thorough, thorough feasibility study and you must do a thorough uh, rollout of your project yeah. or of your uh, product. Right. So that it's able to be accepted in the market and uh, you risk little failure, but failure is something that can actually happen. Right. You right. must so not be afraid of get it. Get familiar with failure yeah. if you want to succeed yeah. in yeah. business. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because not everything is going to be a one shot. Right. Yeah. But then, uh, for example, somebody who's been given money, you've been given 100,000 to start your favorite dream business. Yeah. You start it fails. Mm. So are you going back to ask for another 100,000? Am I going to apologize? You're going to what? What are you going to do? Because you said it's not guaranteed. Yeah. You know, once I start any business, I've been given 150k to start my favorite. I've yeah. started and kaput. It's not working. Well, it's a loss. In fact, I don't even have the money that I pumped into that business. So why do I go back so that I also recover this money so that maybe I start something else, another alternative? Mm. You know. Well, first of all, you must know um, when you're doing something like this. Uh -huh. skills that you need very very important skills is financial management right. and you when you're doing financial management you must also be realistic okay. about uh, what it is that you expect to achieve with this kind of money right. so which means to say that okay so i have 150,000 to start this business yeah right. and when i have 150,000 it's not like i'm just pumping the money into things and expecting outcome right. i have a financial plan okay in this 150,000, I need 3,000 shillings for this, I need 4,000 shillings for this. Mm -hmm. By the time I've spent 10,000 shillings, I expect to see this. Yeah, like it's accountable. Yeah, <coughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to account for everything. And if you're able to do good financial management in your business startup, you'll be able to know if it's actually working or failing, and yeah. you'll be able to mitigate the risk uh, right. involved here so by the time you have spent around 30 40 thousand shillings you'll be like okay uh, something is not working well uh, we have to probably halt and reevaluate what we have done see where the mistakes are before we continue on our financial budget to start our business right yeah so when you talk about failing we don't mean that the whole business is failing uh, yeah. like just starting a business that is uh, is gonna fail i mean like in the first steps you are bound to make one or two mistakes right. but you have to realize that you've made a mistake early yeah. enough this means that you will have also need to have um, a clear uh, perspective right. of what you want to achieve in this business so in this case if you really know by this point i should have been able to do this this and that you'll be able to see that okay uh, this is not working. Is it yeah. because uh, we have done something wrong in our procedures, or is right. it because we have uh, we did a, a wrong feasibility study, and this is not the actual market that we, uh, we anticipated we for it to be? For yeah, right. yeah. Uh, is it possible for someone to uh, start? A let me s let me not use the word bad. A wrong business, like <laughs> you started the wrong business, you invested <laughs> in the wrong things. Yeah. And now it's it, it's now come to bite you. Well, yes. Are there yeah. people that have had such experiences where yes, it was a good business, but it was a wrong business, not meant for you, <laughs> <laughs> not meant for you. Well, yes, 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 yes. Uh, that is actually very possible, and that is why I was talking about uh, doing a feasibility for your business. Mm -hmm. You have to know if it's feasible, either for you handling it 
it may be a good as you said it may be a good business but it's not a good business for you right yeah because maybe this business needs somebody who's more of an outgoing person but you're not that kind of a person mm -hmm. and you can also start this business and hire somebody to do things right. but now that you'll have to take into consideration things like extended capital when you're starting your business because if you're going to hire somebody for you to do things for you in your business yeah. well chances are you're gonna pay them or you have to be also very good at getting people to do things with you or for you yeah. uh, and uh, people getting people to believe in your goals getting people to uh, believe in your business which is actually uh, leadership now in the business aspect of things yep. so yeah it is possible for you to start a business that is not good for you that does not mean that bus the business is not good it's yeah, just not good not for, just you. Meant for you so, yeah and it's 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 always a, a right to research and know that you know yeah. I can do this and excel, and yeah. this, is need, this one I need a help, yeah. or I need an expert, yeah. you know, expertise, help, or yeah. input. You have to be very honest about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, for someone who's watching right now, and uh, they are, maybe they, they have no idea how to navigate through life. For, for example, they just finished high school recently, mm -hmm. or maybe uni, and uh, maybe they say, you know, me, I don't want to go and work at a company. I'm not good with companies. I've, I actually have friends who are like, you know, no. Me, I don't think I can be employed. Like, <laughs> they can't go through. That's, there's one who calls it, it's a matrix. <laughs> mm. <laughs> to go to university, finish uh, university, graduate, uh, he hates the matrix, uh, uh, dislikes the matrix, <laughs> in other words. So uh, what can they do? Because we are singing all about go start a business, get money, start a business. Mm. So how do you research now for them? What can they do? Do they you know, venture into a film production? You know, and how do they also like determine and get to know their strengths in terms of, you know, this is what I can do aside from, you know, getting into a company, sending a CV and being employed, called okay. by the HR, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Well, um, first of all, they have to be very honest about their capabilities, mm -hmm. what they can do, what they can not do. Uh, their um, in capabilities, it has to be like financial capabilities, right. physical capabilities, mental capabilities. So. If you like to do something like that, yep. what I advise people to first of all do is go through some sort of training. Right. You love to go through, like for instance, there's this company that we're doing right now with right. a very good friend of mine. I think she'll be here next week or something like that. Maybe in okay. two weeks, she'll be coming here to speak about more that about- That is Joraf? Yeah, that's Joraf now. Okay. So what we are going through with Joraf right now is the actual training because we will be going into manufacturing uh, we'll be manufacturing uh, coconuts. Uh, we'll be manufacturing, processing coconuts into multiple products. Mm -hmm. So we take one coconut. Uh, from that one coconut, we can produce uh, cooking oil. We can produce heating pellets for the ecosystem and uh, eco-friendly heat source. Right. We can also produce uh, bio coconut water. There's many other things we can do, fertilizer, whatever. Even oil, coconut, even body ointments. Yeah, of yeah, body yeah, oil. yeah. Also, yeah, there's the coconut oil, the famous, famous coconut oil, oh, for the cosmetic one. Oh, it has reminded me that this uh, love and hip hop uh, reality standard at Samuel Safari. Mm -hmm. He's from Jamaica. He's known for that uh, coconut oil thing and lube on love and hip hop Atlanta. <laughs> so I think it's a big business in Jamaica. Yeah, it is. It is actually. Yeah, it is a big business. And you know, uh, such kind of a business I actually do like because first of all, we do the feasibility for this business. We have a potential market in the country. We have another potential market for export. Right. So when your business is uh, actually held up by two or three very possible market shares, right. uh, it means that your business is valuable. Right. Even when you're going out to find venture capitalists to come and fund your business in such a kind of uh, an ecosystem, they come in very willingly because you can prove this is a good business, we can do this, we will need this, we'll need this, and we'll need that. And people are always looking to invest money into good businesses where Absolutely. they can get returns. Uh -huh. So even in business, you don't have to really do it alone. Right. You can dream big, you can start small. small. It does not really matter. Yeah. On the way up. Uh, Joram, how many are you? Joraf, not Joraf. Joram. Oh, well, in is jo it like an abbreviation of your names or something? Well, um, or it means something else. Uh, I, I think I think it it means uh, it's an abbreviation of uh, the founders' names, and I think the son. 
Nah. Yeah, so she started it right. and then she brought us in. And uh, with that, now we've gone into uh, the business development aspect of it. So okay. in Joraf, we are uh, four of us. Okay. So there is our CEO, who is right. uh, Joyce. And then we have our uh, supply chain specialist. Right. And we also have another uh, an IT developer. So now in Joraf, I am not there in the capacity of uh, IT. Mm -hmm. I'm there in the capacity of business development, and I'm also the CFO on Joraf. Right. So, and uh, now you come to see why business systems are important because my role as a CFO in such a thing, I will have to create systems that automate the calculation of all funds and how they move, so that they, we can yeah. be able to be efficient in the in dispersing this because a company like Joraf, we are going out looking for investors right. and we have to account so for all their money. So it's still a growing company? Yes, yes, Not yes. Not yet yes. Large, yeah. largely established? Well, yeah, yeah, we'll be establishing uh, by the end of this year or very early next year, we will have started our first production line. Right. We intend to go on to three production lines. Right, uh, and it's variety of, of, of items from the coconut. Yeah, so we it's called... Uh, vertical business right so in vertical business you do not waste anything mm -hmm. when you take like say something like a coconut like this yes. you uh, differentiate the product right. how many products can come off this coconut that so fruit, yeah. yeah that fruit so, yeah and at the end of the is day coconut a fruit? i think it is <laughs> yes it's a fruit <laughs> yeah it has to be yeah so yeah so at the end of it we find that we can uh, get three products out of it and absolutely no waste yeah. So we found it to be a Eco very eco-friendly. Yeah, as well. yeah. Uh, if you mentioned uh, there's coconut uh, pellets. Yeah, heating uh, pellets. Uh, which other one? There's a uh, coconut cooking oil. Uh huh. Uh, that's the virgin extra virgin oil. Uh, yeah, yeah. The yeah. one safari is known for. Yeah. <laughs> from Jamaica. Yeah. Uh huh. And then there's a. Uh, is there milk? Bio water. I've, 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 I've eaten food that has coconut yeah. milk. Yeah. There's coconut milk. There's right. even the coconut flakes. Coconut right. has a lot of products you can use. Absolutely. Uh, and you see it's a uh, raw material that keeps growing and growing and growing. Right. Yeah. So there's no mining involved for us to actually get this. Yeah. So we find it as a sustainable business and it gives us a sustainable business model. So right. these are things that once w if uh, youth would like to start a business, these are things that they should actually think about right. what their business Don't just go to your business for money. You know, your business also gives you a purpose. Right, and it should grow you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> your other facets yeah. in general in yeah. life. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm also thinking of it, like how did you identify coconut? Uh, like who came up with the initial idea? Because it's an interesting word as well. Did you guys, you know, uh, did you see it? Did you study it from somewhere? Is there a Kenyan maybe who started <laughs> such a business that he never was successful? And so you guys picked up the idea and developed it into this amazing product that you got. Okay, well... Um she actually came with the idea. She went to Austria, and when she was there, she interacted. Who's yeah, sorry. Oh yeah, Austria, Austria. Uh, who, who's who? You said she. Yeah, yeah our CEO now. Oh, our yeah, CEO. Yes, right. yes. Okay. So she went there, and uh, she spoke to a couple of people. She interacted with a couple of business moguls over there, and she saw what they were doing, and she got the idea from them, and she decided that it's something that she'd like to come and do here. Right. So she came and contacted me she, because she's been a good friend of mine for right. a while. Right. And uh, I helped her develop the business aspect of things. And so now we have been able to secure a lot of funding to actually start this venture. Right. Yeah. And here it is. Is it best in Mombasa? Because coconuts massively, yeah. massively at the cost of, yeah, yeah, yeah. they flourish at the cost of regions yeah. mostly. We, we have to do that because, you know, even in my capacity as a business developer, I must think about the cost of production. Right. And uh, if I was to set up such a plant, the best place to do it would be in Mombasa in because in yeah, logistic wise, right. it will only make sense that it's there. So, and currently, is it best? It's best in Mombasa. Oh, it's, it's best uh, in Mombasa. Oh, in Watam. Yeah. Yes. Damn it, uh, I, miss, I miss traveling there. <laughs> it's a, the, it's more, the more we talk about it, the more my mind shifts. Uh, to uh, now you see the holiday now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's best at, uh, at quite a good place. But uh, the market mostly, who are your markets? Who are your target market? Are they people from Nairobi a lot or people from Coastal still? Well, you know, uh, coconut products are used by pretty much everyone. Right. Like 
if if we are talking about people from the coast, they use it to cook. Mahamris, yeah. oh my goodness, you if, should try them. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Once even coconut, coconut uh, in, in, in it, what, what do you call this? Uh, the coconut beans. Yes. And they're actually very nice. So we have the market for this is actually pretty big and uh, we are looking to jump into it with uh, the production. And uh, the products are actually uh, viable for both the Kenyan market and the international market as well. Yeah, so you're looking forward to maybe even exporting. Yes, exactly. It to like the US. Yeah. You know. UK. I, I believe that this country needs more export. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So, uh, well, you, you, you mentioned something that, you know, you, you're coming up that, uh, was it, you said pe pellet. What is a pellet? Oh. Well, a pellet is, uh, okay, you see how a coconut has uh, fibers. Right. A lot of the fibers. The physical, the outer shell. Yeah, the outer shell has fibers or right. even when you take uh, the madaf, it also has, when uh -huh. you dry it, it also has fibers Fiber, on the right. inside. Uh -huh. So, we pretty much grind them and then we... Oh, you have a machine that can be able to... Yes, it is a processing line. Into powder. Oh, it's a processing plant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it Absolutely. is a processing line. So it now starts from here. Now it's yeah. ground into very small, fine, uh, fine yeah, uh, they call breath or something like that. So now uh -huh. with that, it's now then compressed and compacted into small things like this. Right. That can ignite very easily. The clarification value for this is actually pretty high. Right. And uh, we can be able to uh, use this for simple things, even like charcoal grills. Right. Uh, grills, uh, we can uh, stop using firewood, especially firewood, yeah. because we like to... Deforestation. Yeah, it's, and it's, a, it's exactly a big problem. And about the climate change, Africa. That was last week, summit. yes. Exactly. Yeah. Like greening Kenya. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's That's something that we like uh -huh. to get people to adopt because we like them to stop uh, deforestation like to, uh, yeah, and or keep. Uh, the word is alternative sources, sources of, of energy. energy. Yes, right. exactly. And the pricing for it is actually not bad. It's mm. actually almost. It's pretty much the same. Right. Yeah, a kilo of firewood and a kilo of pellets will pretty much cost the same thing. Right. As a matter of fact, even charcoal might be more expensive. Mm -hmm. So the, when you're building a business, you must take these kind of things into consideration. Right. And you must know, okay, what other products are you competing with? Right. Yeah, and uh, what added value does your product bring into the market? And how does your business actually make you feel when you're mm -hmm. doing it? You know, you might be doing a business that is making you a lot of money, right. but it's making you feel very, very bad Drink. because, yeah. Oh, Mentally, emotionally, all yeah. that. You Maybe know. you are just damaging the environment every day, but you're yeah. making millions. You know, at the, at the end of the day, yeah. it will not make you feel the like... Ecosystem yeah. of, of, of the ecosystem of the Samsung business. It really matters because when you look at also most industries, they have a lot of... Uh, uh, West yeah. and the issue of waste management comes comes up a lot, especially when it comes to a business like yours, especially a manufacturing or a processing plant. Yes, exactly. So uh, are there that you guys, uh, how do you manage your waste? Of course, there must be waste in a processing plant or a manufacturing plant. Yes, yes, yes. So how do you guys manage waste? Do you have like a recycling, you know, rotation system? Or oh, there's no waste at all? First of all, with the coconut, it's uh -huh. you get very little waste. Okay. And all the waste that you get in a coconut is uh, organic waste. Right. So with organic waste, you can reuse this waste as anything else. You can put it back in the farm to make the farms richer. Right. So you also decide the kind. Okay, if you're building, say, a chemical plant, right. This is where you'll have to probably to be worried about waste because the byproducts of creating chemicals is other chemicals. Absolutely. And uh, you have to know how to dispose of this. Yeah. There's also the electronic waste, yeah. They yeah. come with, you know, chemicals. Yeah. Now that we spoke of carbon, carbon footprints and yes. carbon emissions at yeah. the Africa Climate Change Summit. Yes. So things like that crop up. Yeah, a mm -hmm. lot, yeah. And so you have to know what is the sustainability of your business. Right. Yeah. How does it uh, uh, help improve the environment? How does it help um, improve the surrounding for other people? Right. Uh, how does it sustain itself? Yes. Uh, so in this case, we are able to authentically say that our waste is very, very minimized okay. and we are able to, um, we are pretty much able to give an accountability for where all our waste products are and all the things that we actually can say that have come off as a byproduct of us producing this. Right. We can uh, be able to account for it very, yeah. very well. So, well, 
even in other kinds of business, I'm not saying that you cannot go, you should not go into like other kinds of business like chemical production because these are things that are actually needed in the market. Yeah. They are actually very, very useful. You just right. have to be very, very good at waste management when you're actually into this and this is going to be part of the cost of your business, yeah. the past of part cost of running your business. So these yeah. are the kind of feasibility things that I was saying that you need to you know. Need to yeah. take a spot check on. Yeah. You realize also most of them end up just, you know, dumping the waste in rivers, especially yeah. uh, Nairobi. Like yeah. almost yeah. every something has a way that finds itself into the Nairobi River Somewhere. or a dump site in Dandora <laughs> or any of those, you know, mentioned places. Yeah. Is well, it because maybe the, the, there's no feasibility you know, structure or the government has never paid attention to such? Um, is it because it's an urban area and this is like an urban area thing? There's always something of either in drainage. Yeah. Now that they've, that they've told us El Nino is coming and I, I, yesterday we saw Governor Sakaja working on how to ensure that the drainage in Nairobi is functional, which is a horrible drainage system. Yeah. And of course, industries and sewages and whatnot, they always find themselves into that system. Yeah. What could be the problem now? Well, you know, we cannot just even blame the big business for polluting the environment. Right. You know, even the small business, even the ones, uh, even roadside business pollute the environment. Absolutely. Yeah. And on that note, <laughs> also roadside business emit carbon. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> I just learned that from the Africa Climate <laughs> Change Summit. Even individually, as well as we're seated here, yeah. each action we do mm. emits carbon. Yeah. <laughs> I was shocked. Electric production emits carbon Absolutely. somewhere. So we are contributing to carbon emissions, and we have no idea about yeah, that. But though not as much as the West, but... Right. Well, uh, but we, I can say... In Kenya, I think we try a lot to actually provide a green environment as much as uh, we also want to support uh, business and things like that. Yes. Um, everybody, it's a personal responsibility when it comes to uh, protecting the environment. Right. The person who's uh, having a roadside business over there, yeah, yes, yeah, they have a right to be there, right to provide for their families, they have a right to do their business, but they also have a responsibility to keep right. where they are clean. Absolutely. So when it comes to uh, environmental conservation, it's pretty much a team effort as a country. We yes. all have to do it. Uh, you do it uh, the best that you can. Right. They do it their part. And uh, at the end of the day, we will find that we have actually gained s uh, substantial results. We cannot just blame uh, yeah. the big the, companies, the companies yeah, yeah. for this for the emissions or the for pollution. But then oh, do we don't have control over our, let's say, our motor system, mm -hmm. motor system in terms of, you know, the cars, the plants. Of course, they're using fuel and energy. Mm -hmm. But we don't have a means of, like, there's a time, uh, was it last year or early in the beginning of the year, I interviewed activists who are championing for clean air in Nairobi. Like, the work is to ensure the air is clean, the air you're breathing is clean. So they had, like, some sort of a machine they had come up with that helps to clean the air. Oh. Not even in a company, just outside, the air is clean. So it was really interesting to see like such people are jumping onto you know uh, the, this kind of conversation we are having. Okay. We have to go. I have like one question for you okay, before no you worries. tell us how people can reach out to you. Okay. Um, just one last one. What do you think is the future of small businesses in our country? Just shortly, in like less than a minute, do we have um, uh, do we have a, a positive environment that favors them? Am we are still struggling and um, not yet out of the woods yet? Well, I'll say uh, it looks optimistic to me right. that uh, the business environment in Kenya, it's not an easy one, but it looks a bit more optimistic because our infrastructure is very good. You know, like if you're gonna do business, you need infrastructure to support you. Absolutely. Our infrastructure is good. Right. Uh, our power Capacity is also good. We cannot complain about that though. Maybe once or twice something can happen like the other time when yeah. the power went out in the whole country. Right. But it was shocking. Kenya yeah. of all the people, <laughs> the best, the second largest country in Africa. Yeah. <laughs> With a power outage for yeah. a whole day. But the good thing, you know, the, the fact that people even complain means that we actually have a very good power grid in the first right. place. Because some countries they actually don't complain, it's the norm. Yeah. So for you to be able to sustain your business, you must have this kind of infrastructure that supports you. So I will say it's actually very optimistic for a business person to start. Yeah. Uh, there's also the uh, financing aspect of it. Right. 
well, we have a couple of financial financing ish, uh, institutions, right. like you know the banks can help you, the circles can help you, which is also right. a very good thing that uh, a youth entrepreneur or aspiring entrepreneur has to learn yeah. the financial things on knowing how to save. The President's Initiative of the Hustler Fund yes. that came in to aid you know yeah. those who want to start up cash. Yes, to, to exactly. Go. Yeah. All right, so uh, for anyone who has been watching and they want to reach out to you very fast, we are out of time. How can they find you? Where can they get to get maybe a link, a website to your businesses and get even the mentorship that you do? Uh, this is your camera. Okay, uh, well, if you would like to find me and you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Alex Donga. And uh, you can also reach out to me at uh, n and Business Solutions Limited at gmail.com which is our main uh, email for communications. You can also find me at 0725-762-130. That's my mobile number. All right, yeah. absolutely. Uh, hopefully, they'll get to contact you and get to know you more and get to interact with the services you offer as well, okay. and also the products yeah. and many other things you do. Okay, yeah. All right, thank good. you so much for coming through, Alex. All right, thank you Great so much, Blan, for hosting me. Yeah. yeah. Karibu sana. Yeah. All right, and that's where we bring it to our close. So you have been watching Entrepreneurship Tuesday. We have been speaking to Alex Ndonga, who's a business developer. He, he, he's, he has many hearts, right? <laughs> and definitely you've gotten to know how to interact with him and the insights on how to create a sustainable business. My good name is Sankwa. You can find us on X, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, threads as well at Y244 channel. Personally, mine is at Brian Sankwa 101. We'll definitely see you next time right here on Y in the morning. Have a fantastic Tuesday.